I think one of the foundations of effective communication is respect, Mm -hmm. mutual respect. You may not agree with a person, but at least have that level of respect to be able to empathize. That's also critically important. When I'm communicating, I'm not really thinking about myself. I'm thinking about the other person. I'm not coming up with my own answers while that person's speaking. I'm giving that person my full undivided attention. Yeah, there was something else I had to that to think of as you were talking about that, but I think the sneezes got a <laughs> hold of me. But yeah, um, listening with empathy, being able to be wrong, not being having all the answers all the time. I think that's really huge in in marriages because I'm always thinking that I'm like my side is the only way, not looking at my husband's perspective, but just being able to listen with empathy and compassion and, you know, don't have to be right all the time. Mm. Yeah. I learned. Uh, I'll give some structure points just because of the time. Um, to even to your point, talking about uh, conversations with your wife. With my wife, I've learned and I've been getting guidance to say, when my wife starts to talk, I ask her, do you need a listener or do you need me to solve? At the front end. And she appreciates that because there's sometimes she needs me to solve and I naturally, I'm, I was like, I'm a natural problem solver, right? So, you know, I ask her that and it just, it brings her shoulders down. And so she doesn't feel I have to say the right thing. He's just listening. Um, and then even second to this even point around communication, I don't want, to, we can't understate this. A issue, a critical issue in relationship sustaining is the inability of a husband or a wife to apologize and forgive. Mm. Learning how to actually apologize. It's a picture again of the gospel, of confessing and then of receiving the grace. Some people, you're so focused on being right, you do wrong. And so a a picture I'll share is that for many people, so much of lifelong traumas is because of things that have happened to them. And those people that have did that thing to them never apologized. If you can understand the weight of a lack of apology in your own life, how much more should you be sensitive to the lack of apology you're giving your spouse? Hmm. So I want to offer that. The last two things I think to this point around communication, your life is communication. And the reason that you and I had, man, we had a great conversation, three hours, man. I love this, I love this guy, man. And we had a three hour conversation that I still hear about every, every, every week. And one of the things I talk about is you forget in the, in the, the scriptures that the gospels are written accounts of disciples who spent enough time with Jesus to write about him. One of the beauties of marriage and what you communicate is you communicate your life to someone. They are the potentially the best autobiographer known to man in your life. No one will know you like your spouse. And brothers and sisters, no one there, they bring things out of you that no one else in the world can. The best autobiographer possible in your life is your spouse. And so communication, the idea that I just need to stay here so I could just be able to bear witness to tell the world long after you're gone, you were here. This is how you were like. At your funeral, I say, this is what they really liked. This is the movies they really liked. That's another motivation, number one, to communicate to each other well. You need to have another story about why you need to listen. Because perhaps maybe, just maybe, you're put in a position to be the gospel writer to that other person's life and them to you. So I think that's critical. And the last piece I'll talk about, which is, Marriage is made in the mundane. It's made in the mundane. Too often we may unconsciously look to marriage for our dopamine hits. Example, you may go to pray and sometimes you pray and you feel like, I felt the spirit of the Lord over me. Sometimes you go to Sunday service and you have your hand up like that, that sap, you know what I mean? Like that little gift when he like, you know, never would have made it. And there's sometimes when you just get nothing. Your faith is supposed to fill the gap. Like, I'm, am I here to get a high or am I here to connect with God, however he may show up to me? Am I here in this marriage to get a high and you're supposed to keep me happy? If you're single, people spend their entire lives trying to be happy. 
How, how do you think the relationship is going to allow you to be happy? They put that in the bottle and make you a trillionaire if you could do that. So there are times when I'm not going to feel it. But that 1 Corinthians 7 even talks about sex. It talks about the duty of sex, of husband and wife. And so I think the reality is it's like you should not work for the highs, the Sunday services of your marriage. You should work for the Monday through Saturdays of your marriage. It's not the high. It's the mundane is where you really make the magic.